Welcome to the final challenge. Not work full time, put more time into training would completely change the game. I don't know what happened, I just heard it. New derailleur and hanger. Um, and I think that I have something more to offer than the boys have. Yeah, I really do think that I have an edge for sure. I uh, definitely think that I deserve to win it. One, last day of racing. Three riders competing for $25,000 and a pro contract for Morbea Bikes. Who's gonna take it? Find out right now in the finale of the Pink Bike Academy, presented by Shimano. You push the pedal to the floor. In this game, we always ready for more. Oh, you try to push me to my limit, but they yes, know that I've been here before. Uh. This is awkward. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Good, and you? Great. Before we start, yeah. just to let you know, we've seen the OBA contract. We've seen it's pretty open and it, we're gonna ask you quite a few questions, but your answers, we're gonna take them very seriously. Every answer you give us, every commitment, words, will count like a real contract commitment. So yeah. if you say something, we expect you to, to follow through. Yeah. Cool. All right. And just so you know, the decision has not been made yet. You guys are sitting right on the top step all together. So we want some real answers. Today, the race will once again take place in the Big White Bike Park. The riders will start on Gecko, a technical single track trail that is short but physical. After that, they'll drop into Knockout, a rowdy trail that has plenty of line choice and opportunities to have a mechanical. One mistake here could cost you your race. The last stage of the day is on Catapult Ranch, an incredibly rough and rugged trail that will push the riders' abilities to the limit. As Joe is the final female, Christina will be setting times on each stage for her to be judged against. Our final judging panel consists of Christina Chapetta and Fabian Cousinier. Together, they will decide the winner of the Pink Bike Academy, and this time, they'll be looking at the riders' results from the whole season. I'd say just the last couple days, things have heated up a lot, and just even reviewing the contract yesterday just really made us realize how like big this is and like what it would do to you. So, um, yeah, you definitely get locked in when you're fighting for something like this and it's a big moment and you know that's what you live for so definitely just trying to be as focused as I could. What are your goals for racing for 2021? Obviously some if I want I'd love to do some enduro racing and give it a go you know like these bikes are so sick like they, they ride well they're planted they're fast like they feel good and I think that being able to do my first EWS would be a cool experience. I think that like a cool result goal would be to get a top 20 EWS. I think that I would definitely go for that 100%. I've seen you only raced once enduro. Why just one enduro race and so many don't race when you're here? I, uh, I don't know, I just have always been such a big downhill racer, but it's never been about just downhill racing for me. It's just been about like bike riding in general. And I find like I've always been really good on a trail bike. And I just thought like coming into this, I was like, why not? The amount of downhill races I've seen go from World Cups to EWSs and like win or like be in the top 10 all the time is like so many, right? So. Yeah, but right now you're Razor Daniel. Out of four uh, World Cup Daniel, only one qualification. This speed that you display on your Daniel bike, do you think that's enough? I'm not saying that I'd go there and be a top 10 guy. I'm just saying that I think that my bike riding in general has been at such a high level like for a long time that I think I could translate quickly. And I think that that would be something I'd love to do too.
think Ben and Evan expected they would be here. I didn't quite know that this would happen. I'm relaxed about it and just trying to do my best, but now it's like, oh my God, this could like, the, my dreams could come true. This is crazy. What do you think about your racing career so far? Yeah, my racing career has been really interesting. I started five years ago. I actually came last in the open category. Um, and I met amazing people. Like, I think I met Christina for the first time and some other women that I was just like, okay, I had no idea how fast people actually go. Um, and I got super motivated and slowly sort of climbed the ladder and within the next year I became first or second in the open category for like all of the Canadian enduro. And then I entered the pro category a couple years after and I'm still like sort of in the bottom end of the pro category, but every year I've like got significantly better. What I like is racing against myself and always every year making sure that I'm improving. But I think I would like to, so I've been sort of like the bottom, maybe three or four in the pro category. I'd like to be mid-pack in the pro category by next year. For sure this is the biggest kind of step or I guess most committing thing. Um, just nothing has had that, this much of a reward. So yeah, everything this week is leading up to something huge here. What are your racing goals for 2021? For 2021, I would kind of look into, I've been doing the Canadian national races for the past six or so years, but I would like to get into a higher level because uh, kind of just racing the same people over and over gets a little stagnant and like, you don't find yourself pushing as much. Where if I were to race EWSs or like the big mountain enduros down in the States, there's just new competition, new venues and stuff, which really allows for progression. So what will be your position goal in uh, EWS? Uh, past years I've just been in um, U21, which I've had a couple podiums and such. Uh, I think I've been around like 30s, 40s in EWS, and I would love to push for top 30s and, well, obviously better than that, but I think top 30s is pretty respectable as a first year in elite. What's your goal with your media and your output in the next year, if you win? The thing that I'm most excited about actually is having access to GoPro and the app that it comes with, because now I'm like, I can make the videos I've always wanted to make. Like, I realized that that was possible. I was like, I'm just gonna make one like every week or at least every month and like have a little theme. Um, really like to develop some videos for coaching, but have sort of a unique twist. Um, I definitely want to create tons of content, so photos. I want to. I think I go on really interesting and unique trips when I bike. Um, I sort of like uh, some self-supported sort of bike packing style trips, or like big epic hike bikes, um, or just road trips with the truck and my dog and like lifestyle kind of things. Yeah, over the year I'll definitely be able to produce a lot of really fun content. What do you plan with your media package for the next year? I don't know, that's a good one. Um, I love to do like photo shoots and videos. Like I've done a lot in the last couple of years. I don't know, I just like having the opportunity to like show my riding on camera. Um, so doing a few edits would be really fun. Like I had a really good time doing that GoPro edit the other day. So even using the GoPro at home would be really cool because I've never really had a tool like that. And then just making sure that you're posting lots of cool stuff on your Instagram.
I'd like to get a little bit more like schedule to my content rather than just like, oh, I got a cool shot, I'll post it. It'd be very beneficial for myself and the companies supporting me to like, whether it's like updates on the bike or like riding or racing. Going into the season, I had two main ideas I wanted to do. One was film my trail that I've spent the past two and a half years building. And the other being like a more alpine, like adventure focused segment out in the Purcell Mountains. And I think that's a cool thing to like feature something other than racing and just riding trails. Why, why do you think you should win over Ben and Joe? It's a hard question because they're both rad people and I don't like to put people down, but I think- a, There can only be one winner. There can be, yeah. I think Joe's a little bit more lifestyle stuff and has a like pretty like upper end job right now. Um, and then I think between me and Ben, a big part of it would be that he is like committed more to downhill racing where I've been racing enduro my whole life and that's kind of the path I'd like to go. And I think I'd personally be more committed to like going the enduro route. Have you made any sacrifice like to date to get where you are, you know? I, yeah, I quit my job to be here. Okay, so you quit, you quit your job already? Yeah, before coming here like a couple weeks in advance, told my boss that I needed these couple weeks off and he said that that wouldn't really work for him. And so I said, okay, well, this is too big of an opportunity that I'd have to quit the job. Yeah, yeah, woo! So why do you think you should win more than Ben and Evan? Yeah, I think that I just offer something different because I have, well, I have 10 years on them. So I have a lot of experience with dealing with people. Um, I'm approachable. I'm also pretty comfortable and confident in any situation. Yeah, I can offer something unique in the creative sense combined with biking. And so you think that's enough to be more valuable than Ben and Evan? I think so. I think what I've noticed in the bike world that to be successful, you need to approach a greater, um, sort of realm of people. I think they are will be extremely successful with racing and also um, within like a small bike community. But I think I'll be able to reach everybody. I'll get people stoked on bikes that have never biked before. So I think like in the industry, that's more important. It's the question we are asking ourselves. Why would you be the winner? Tell us why. I think that I've just put the hours in in racing and training and like my love for the sport has been for forever. And I've like since I was started racing, like you know, age 12 or whatever, it's like it's just been my whole life. Like people like think, oh, like, like why don't you do anything but ride? And I'm like, well, it's my favorite thing to do in the world. Like, why wouldn't I? I think that like if I was chosen, it wouldn't be like you wouldn't be getting someone who's going to half-ass it. Like I've always put so many hours in in the winter, and especially like last year, it was like really tough with my head and like being, you know, like being a little bit injured and like trying to train with that is really hard. So just being able to get healthy this year has like helped me a lot, and like I'm just been progressing like quite a bit this summer. So um, just being able to have a full winter where like I would put so much work into it is something that I would love to do. Yeah, man.
All right, two savage days of racing, followed by an interrogation session. I'm not sure what was gnarlier, the tracks or your guys' questions. Let's go through them all, starting with Evan. Yeah, I mean, he kind of led throughout the whole season. He won pretty much every race that we put he and Ben up against, but it was so tight. And so I really enjoyed actually watching the two guys up in the start gates. I definitely think, you know, for Evan, um, some of his strengths are that he is passionate. He definitely wears all of his emotions on his sleeve. You, whatever you see is definitely what you're gonna get. And I definitely, I respect that a lot in him. And uh, yeah, unfortunately for Evan, he's an enduro rider and he got beaten at our race by Ben. And uh, even though he had a mechanical, it's part of the game. It is, for sure. Let's go to Joe, good and bad. Yeah, I think Joe has a very complete package. I think she learned so much riding with the guys the last couple of events and, you know, looking at their lines, seeing what speed is even possible because you don't realize like how someone has a 30 second gap or a minute gap on you until you can see it in real life. And so I think she's gonna come out of this with so much growth regardless of the competition. The bad for me is more like um, she could do everything she committed before. You know, if you want to do that much media project and things like that, you don't need really a big contract to do it. I like to believe her, but on the other end, it could happen earlier. Last but definitely not least, Ben, the kid, the young gun, good and bad. Let's start with the good because he won the race. Uh, he's a downy rider, but uh, at the end, no mechanical, clean, consistent. He showed us that he could adapt and progress and clearly just deliver. So that is a strong point. The best thing Ben has going for him, in my opinion, well, the best things, is that he is stupid fast. Like there is just no denying how fast and focused and determined he is. And to see that in a 20 year old is just, you know, it's actually really inspiring. It, it makes me want to focus more and try harder and train harder. Um, at the same time, he's just maybe a little too confident for his age. You know, he has a lot to learn from older competitors. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I think uh, Ben, he really didn't have much plan on the media side, apart from doing some video and photo, which could be pretty much what uh, my mom do on a Sunday on the family dinner, you know? So he was a bit vague, and uh, those days to be an ambassador, athlete, or pro, you're gonna have the full package. So three very different finalists. Do you guys have a decision made? It was the toughest decision, but we have made a decision. You guys sure? For sure. sure. Okay. Well, this time, let's all go out to the ceremony and go change someone's life. Good luck. <laughs> Good yeah. luck, buddies. Ben, Evan, Joe, congratulations on making it to the end. Thank you. <laughs> no matter what happens next, you should all be incredibly proud of yourselves. Before we get started, you may have noticed your former competitors are here and I want to ask them some questions. Addison, thinking back to your day one impressions, are you surprised to see any of these riders here? Uh, well, riding with Joe, I was, I was showing Joe a few lines and then she took off like a rocket ship, looked like she was pro from day one. <laughs> ben and Evan, both as soon as we stepped on course, first blind runs, I couldn't keep up. So I knew all three of them were, were something to contend with. Thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs> Julia, who do you think has what it takes to win this thing? I mean, I think they all have what it takes. Um, definitely depends on what Orbea is looking for. They're all different riders. I think they're all very competitive in their disciplines, whether it's racing, 
coaching, ambassadorship, videos. Um, I think they all have what it takes. It's just all in different ways. So it's a really cool representation of what biking can do for you. Tom, you've been trackside for the last two races. Who impressed you out there? Yeah, everyone did it right. But uh, I think Evan and Ben coming down to, I think there were four stages where they were under a second apart. That's pretty impressive. It's pretty cool to see. And finally, Angie, you were almost standing in this lineup. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> Who do you want to see win? Joe, of course. Yeah, she's helped me be where I am now, and I want to see her be successful in the future. Thank you. Then, Evan, Joe. In one sentence, I would like you to tell me why you should be the winner of the Pink Bike Academy. Ben, let's start with you. Oh, it's a tough one, yeah. Um, I think that I've had a really fun time here and really cool experience, and I think that, you know, just hanging out and riding with everyone, it's been really sweet, but uh, I think that, you know, I definitely deserve to win. I think I'm the best rider here, and I think that, you know, it showed in the last few days. Evan. Uh, being here has been an awesome experience. Uh, apart from Pink Bike Academy alone, I'm, in my eyes, the most passionate rider I know. Uh, I just, yeah, love mountain biking, love racing more than anything else. And uh, I have the drive to put everything I can into a racing career. Last but not least, Joe. All right. I think that I'm the most well-rounded rider here. I have the, uh, the most uh, array of skills to inspire others, not only in the mountain bike community, but also others that have never touched a bike before to ride bikes and get, get into the sport. Guys, this was a tough decision. I think I have a really good chance, but it really depends what they're looking for. But yeah, I feel like I could totally win this. And our judges went back and forth many times. Super excited and super nervous to find out what's gonna happen here. The winner of $25,000. Uh, yeah, someone's gonna get a big fat contract and uh, it's gonna be pretty cool. I sure hope it's me. And a pro contract from Orbea Bikes here at the Pink Bike Academy is... Evan. I'm just like in shock right now, I guess. I can't even, can't even put it into words. It's such a wild thing to happen. He really deserves it, so yeah, I'm really stoked for him. What's next for you? I'm not sure, yeah. Um, probably go home and ride some bikes and just uh, have some fun on, on bikes and see where it takes me. Uh, Evan definitely deserves this. Like, best person for the job. Like, he is, he's perfect for it, for sure. Uh, nothing, nothing I would say I'd do differently, no. Everything kind of went how I pictured it, and nothing was not true to myself, which is sweet. I would say this is the start of a new, new, continued life. Uh, yeah, riding bikes, but it's gonna be different now.